Happy Juneteenth. Hi, everyone. I'm Christian Coates, CEO of the First Amendment Museum. Today, I'm joined by Joe McGill, the founder of the Slave Dwelling Project, who's on a mission to sleep in every former slave dwelling in the United States. A descendant of enslaved people, Joe sleeps in these buildings to draw attention to the often neglected structures that are vitally important to American history. Joe is also a historical consultant for Magnolia Plantation in Charleston, South Carolina. Joe, thanks so much for being with us today. Nice to be with you in this capacity. Joe, today, today is Juneteenth. And for folks who don't know what Juneteenth is all about, can you help us understand the meaning and the importance of the day? Yes, uh, Juneteenth is freedom, uh, put it simply, freedom uh, from, from enslavement. One thing about the Emancipation Proclamation and the ending of that civil war was that uh, if there were not any union forces in place to enforce all that, you know, freedom meant very little. It took a while uh, after the end of the war for Granger and, and his union forces to get out to Galveston, Texas, uh, that date that he, he got there uh, to enforce all that freedom for those formerly enslaved people, that date was June 19th of 1865. And that's the date that uh, has been celebrated and is being celebrated more as the day of freedom. Let's look at this through a First Amendment lens. I'm wondering about the, the free Black folk uh, in the 18th and early, you know, antebellum years, early 19th century. Uh, did the First Amendment apply to them? So those rights that were afforded by the, the First Amendment, they were being sidetracked. And uh, in, in, in as it applied to those free Blacks of that time, you know, if they got too far away from where they it could be proven that they were free, then they would uh, stand a chance of, of being sold into slavery, even if they were born free. So that was always a threat to, you know, not only runaways, but the free Blacks of that period too. It came with restrictions. And the 14th Amendment comes in 1868, and that promises due process to everybody. So at least by then, all Black folk, African Americans in America must have had access to First Amendment rights by then, right? The First Amendment, all those amendments up to that point, there, there was hope that all those things could be applied to these recently freed people. But, uh, you know, Reconstruction ends. Uh, 1877, the Union forces are are pulled out of the South and those things that replaced slavery was convict labor and, and KKK and, and lynchings and, and redlining and poll taxes and Jim Crow laws and, and black codes and disenfranchisements and massacres yeah. um, that we've been so recently made, made aware of. All those things came into play. So uh, there were all these challenges that uh, had to be overcome, and we are still overcoming to this day. So, so when then would you say that African Americans received the full protection of their First Amendment rights? I, I think it's ongoing. That's an aspect of seeking this more perfect union in, in ensuring that those rights are, are afforded to African Americans, because we're still living with the residuals of, of that institution of, of slavery. The trying times that, that we are in right now, uh, trying to obtain, you know, equal rights, it's nothing new. And, you know, Black Lives Matter is kind of a, a, a result of the necessity to continue that struggle. In, in this document, this constitution that, that, that we created, um, it had its flaws because it had to be amended many times. And, you know, the focus of this is one of those amendments. Is it okay for white folks to celebrate Juneteenth? I think it's certainly appropriate for white folks to, to celebrate Juneteenth. A lot of the, a lot of white folks who are attracted to the Slave Dwelling Project are descendants of slave owners. And, and the, you know, this is their way to try to reconcile, if you will, or, or, or show that they, that, that they care. Part of the, the, the problem that, that we face as a nation is that you know, too many of us want to stay in a comfortable place. You know, those parts of history that, that, that we don't want to hear, we, we tend to want to lock that stuff out. When I work at Magnolia Plantation and people come there and they make choices as to which tours to go on, 
well, the tour of the slave cabins is chosen the least. That speaks to us as a nation, speaks to the, the history that we would much rather want to uh, uh, indulge in. So I think that, uh, you know, with that, I think you know, white folks should be a part of this celebration, this commemoration. I can't agree with you more. I can't, I can't imagine how people wouldn't want to celebrate the freedom of four million people you know, who were, who were all Americans. So thanks so much for being with us today, Joe. Everyone out there, please check out the Slave Dwelling Project at www.slavedwellingproject.org and have a great Juneteenth. Tune in again. There'll be more one-on-ones in our future. Happy Juneteenth. <laughs>